One of the biggest questions for the Chicago Bulls this offseason is what are they going to do with Zach Levine? There has been a huge cloud surrounding Zach Levine and moving him because one, the trade market was not valued high for him and two, he has also been injured. But with a recent report from Casey Johnson, who is a beat writer for the Chicago Bulls, he's in fact coming out and saying that the path to move Zach Levine might be the best path that it has been in quite some time. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about this article, what this means for the Chicago Bulls, and are they going to move him this offseason? This is Rico Greenhow, and this is another episode of Bulls Digest. And so before we jump into it, guys, I want to let you know that 84.3% of you guys that watch the video are not subscribed to the channel. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with your latest news and happenings about your Chicago Bulls. And without further ado, guys, let's jump into the first part of the video, which is Levine will be traded this offseason. And so that is the million dollar question, I think, for the Chicago Bulls. I know we have a lot of other questions, but I think that the Zach Levine um, saga is probably the biggest for us. And, you know, there's several things that are going to be brought up into this article. And I, I love how um, Casey Johnson who, if you're familiar with the team, he is uh, essentially a reporter that you'll see on the sidelines during the games, and he usually uh, puts in some insights either about the team and also, too, about the game as well. So, um, you know, terrific pieces that he writes there for the Chicago sports. Uh, so definitely check that out. And so let's jump into what actually was said here into this article. So, um, his contract status, first and foremost. So Zach Levine has three years, roughly $130 million remaining on his five-year maximum contract that he signed before the 22-23 um, season. And then there's the season pretty much in review. Just paraphrasing it here. So um, he started off with a great preseason, guys, but then it really got a little rough for Levine, who shot just 64% near the rim, well down from his 70% just two seasons prior. He played like a below the rim player at times, missing layups and not powering through uh, contact. His 4.1 free throw attempts per game marked his lowest average since 2016 2017 all right and here's a look ahead here so multiple outlets including the nbc sports chicago has reported that management's main offseason priority is trading levine um at first here um it, levine especially with so much money remaining on his deal would have to show teams that he's healthy in order to be traded in other words, that is the trade market might not develop until closer to the February 2025 trade deadlines. But multiple rival executives no longer believe that this is the case. Playoffs and playoff failures can change rival franchises' thinkings. Uh, would the Philadelphia 76ers be motivated to use their salary cap space to add another elite scorer in Levine? Is Orlando willing to add a veteran scorer to its young promising mix does donovan mitchell's uncertain future in cleveland lead to if not a direct match some three team possibilities what about the golden state uh, not making the playoffs these questions plus the bulls motivation to find a trade partner will at least create activity this offseason whether the bulls can find a trade partner uh, won't be a lack of trying and lastly Here's the good news moving into this offseason. So he's ahead of schedule, and it also states here that, um, you know, he's not having to deal with anything with a, a bone heal. Uh, the, the surgery removed a piece of a, a bone that was chipped off. He's essentially a healing a soft tissue uh, around a tendon, and he's hoping to recover um, from his first down season in a while. And if the Bulls can't trade him, he says it's not hard to fit back in, especially with the way I play the game and want to go out there and help, he said in March. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and start to unpack everything that was said here. So first and foremost, to start off with what uh, was said at the top of the article, the fact that he's shooting now 64% uh, at the rim is a bit scary for me. And the fact that it mentions that he's not finishing at the rim um, as, as well as he once was, that's an issue for me because 
There's one thing that was stated, I think, by I think Charles Barkley on Inside the NBA. He always talks about everybody has pretty much a superpower uh, in the NBA. And I think that Zach Levine's real superpower is being able to slash and finish at the cup. Here is a guy that is, I believe, a two-time uh, dunk champion. So this guy is definitely explosive at the rim. So if he's starting to lose that explosiveness at the rim, that's a bit scary. Okay, And then plus... He's had foot injuries and knee injuries, several of them, all right? Now, that's fine. You know, time goes along, injuries happen, and you're no longer able to play at that type of, you know, explosiveness, but you have to develop other aspects of your game. And I know he once had our franchise record in shooting three-pointers, but I don't know if that's something that's going to be translatable for Zach Levine, which is really what scares me. Uh, I love Zach Levine personally. I have had a chance to watch him at UCLA, and I remember saying that this guy is for sure going to be a great player in the NBA, and he is. I just think that because his injuries and because our younger talent and backcourt has gotten better, I think that now it just moves to a point where I think we have to move on from Levine and we need to free up that money so we can get, I think, better pieces back that they may not be to a superstar level, but they're complementary pieces. I think that what the Chicago Bulls now have to do is they have to add depth to their stars, all right? And so, you know, with the teams that have been mentioned associated with Zach Levine, I think he's been mentioned with the Kings. Um, he was mentioned with the Golden State Warriors, even in this article, and he's mentioned with the Sixers. So starting with the Sixers, guys, if you caught that playoff game with Tyrese Maxey and he scored 41 points, uh, Joel Embiid is not necessarily, well, he's a shell of himself at this point in time. So you got to ask yourself, it, it, would you want Zach Levine out there to take touches away from Tyrese Maxey, who is the most improved player of the year? Like, I think that Philadelphia would probably rather have uh, a guy like Tyrese Maxey in control of those situations versus deferring. And Zach Levine is the type of guy that his three-point percentage, I'm going to throw up his stats, is not that high, and it's kind of teetered up and down, guys. And so these teams that he's mentioned going to, he would need to be a knockdown shooter. Like, I think that if he goes to Philadelphia, they're not going to want him to dominate the basketball. They're going to need him to be a knockdown shooter. If he went to Golden State, they are all predicated on player movement, ball movement. You need to be able to cut off that. Yes, he'll be able to get dunks and stuff, but there's times where your cutting is going to lead to three-point shots and you have to hit it. Think about when D'Angelo Russell was over there, right? Like it didn't necessarily work. Right, because that's not his game. He's more of a guy that he needs to have the ball in his hand and he needs to get into a rhythm before he shoots that. And so that's where I think that the real issue and it has been like a dry market as far as shipping Zach Levine off because these teams, honestly, that would maybe want to try and utilize him, they don't even have a whole bunch that they could give us back. And so I'm thinking like the best thing or best scenario for us, man, is that we either go ahead and explore a salary dump. I know that this is terrible and I know that we get a lot of pushback and I probably will in the channel, but I'd mentioned the whole Ben Simmons deal and buying him out. Like, I think that that might be one of the best scenarios for us. Like if we can get some pieces back in a deal um, and not give away like a Caruso or something like that, that's even better. Like, you know, that's great if we can get guys to fill out our bench. We need like a Malik Monk, um, even though he's not on contract, but we would need players like that. We would need a Harrison Barn. We need guys to come off the bench, not necessarily start for us. Because remember guys, you know, if we wanted to go ahead and replace him in the starting lineup, we're still thinking about Patrick Williams. What are we going to do with him? Like we still obviously still want to give him a chance, guys. So it's just it's not enough basketballs out there for Zach Levine. And as much as I love him, the reason why DeMar DeRozan works for us is because DeMar DeRozan doesn't need the basketball. He can obviously still dominate the game and affect it in the critical moments without dominating the basketball. He will let Kobe White and those guys operate, and he knows how to play with them in the flow of the game like that. And that's not necessarily the case for Zach Levine. And quickly, just throwing up his stats, guys, 
Look, he's missed games. I know some of that was due to the pandemic, guys, but that is not a good sign. And then when you look at his three-point percentage, I know it's a down year, but guys, 30 under 40% is not going to translate to some of these teams that he's linked to going to, all right? And so I think that, you know, the best case scenario for us is that we need to go ahead and trade him, I think, for a salary dump, or we're going to have to trade him and get some pieces back that certainly can help us stretch the floor and defend a little bit better. You know, I'm just throwing out names. Um, and, and I don't think these are going to happen, but somehow we need to get a guy like a, a Desmond Bain over there. You know, a guy who can stretch the floor and shoot it. We need a guy that uh, can defend, like think of a Marcus Smart type of player. We need people to fill the bench. And we also, we also want to bring back some of our height too as well. Like I think that Probably bringing back Drummond and maybe adding a player like Edie or uh, Cleegan in the draft kind of makes a lot of sense, especially if we're still even thinking about moving away from Vooch. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments, guys. Do you think that Zach Levine fits the Chicago the Chicago Bulls scheme as far as their offense? Um, do you guys think that he would be welcome back if he's willing to take a bench role? Uh, do you guys think that, you know, perhaps we should go ahead and just trade him and get a salary back that we could just go ahead and buy out? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is Rico Greenhow. This is Bulls Digest. And as usual, go Bulls. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.